Welcome to part 6 of the top-down tank battle tutorial in Godot 3.0. Last time we made our tanks shoot, and this time we'll be talking about how to make them take damage. Alright, let's get started. So now that we have the tanks shooting at each other, we need to make these bullets do some damage. So we're going to go into the tank script. This is the generic tank script that both of the tank types inherit from. And we're going to make it so that they can take some damage. And what that means is we want to add a method that lets any object that deals damage deal its damage to the tank. So we've already created a signal that we're going to emit when the health changes. We've created a variable to hold the health. And actually this one, I'm going to change this to max health. So the variable that we, the export variable that we set on each tank will be what its maximum health is. It's fully healed and then we're going to have a we're just going to have a health variable that then um, is the one that can change uh, when it takes damage and then in the ready we want to set our health to the max health uh, value and we'll emit the signal at that point so that whatever UI we have which we haven't made yet will know to show to display the right value uh, when it sees this. So we're going to emit the health changed and we want to tell it what value to display. And since the max health can be changed to you know, any value we want and we might have different amounts of damage happening, we're just going to use the percentage. So I'm going to say health times 100 over max health so that we just pass in to the bar to display a percentage of whatever our health is. And then down here, we're going to add a take damage method as well. And that is going to be what handles all the damage. So we'll say take damage. And it's going to, you're going to pass in an amount of damage to take. So we subtract that from the health. We're going to emit the signal. We'll emit the same signal again. So I'm just going to stick that right in there as well. And then if our health is less than or equal to zero, we're going to explode. And what does explode mean? Well, eventually we're going to play some animation and stuff like that. But for right now, explode just means Q-free. So that when the health runs out, the tank will be destroyed. So now our tank can take damage, we need to look at our bullet and see how to deal that damage. So we've already added on the bullet script that if it hits a body that has that take damage method, it's going to call it. So we should be able to see our stuff working. Let's check real quick and see here. So I have the player's max health set to 100, I have the enemy tanks set to 50, and then I have both bullets, I believe, set yeah to do 10 damage. So we should be able to run it and see our bullets destroying the enemy tank if we hit it enough times. So we'll have, head over here and start trading damage. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So now we are dealing the damage. Well, now we need a way to see the that health value uh, on the screen. I've started making the HUD here. So this is a canvas layer, and its children are a margin container, which is going to just keep everything from getting too close to the edges of the screen. I have an HBox container that's going to organize whatever control nodes you put inside of it are automatically uh, organized in a horizontal line. And so you don't have to do any management of the anchors and everything like that. It'll automatically space them out. And I have a texture rec and a texture progress. So this texture progress is going to be the health bar. And that's going to display the a colored bar showing how much health you have or what percentage of your health you have. The texture rec is just going to be a, an icon. So we know that that's showing our armor or our health, whatever we want to call it. And I'm just going to rename these a little bit to make them a little more manageable. Okay, so now I've saved these in a, uh, a UI folder where we're going to put all of our UI scenes, UI related scenes. 
Okay, so let's set up these nodes. Uh, the margin container, I've set it to full rect, which means it covers the whole viewable area of the screen. And then I've set the custom constants down here for the four margin values to 20. So it will keep a 20 pixel border around all the sides. The container, we don't really need to do anything to. The texture rect, uh, we're going to stick a texture in there. And in the assets folder, we've got a little shield image. It's going to look like that. And then for the texture progress, the way these nodes work is that you assign them a texture and it displays as much of that texture as your value you set on the bar. So we're going to go into the UI section of the assets and I'm going to grab this horizontal green bar. I'm going to drop that in the progress texture. That's the one that shows the value. So for example, if I go down here and set the value, see the minimum is zero, maximum is 100. That's good because we're doing percentages. And let's say our value was 75%, then we see 75% of the green bar. And we can make that look a little nicer by using this over texture because that's what texture will be laid over on top of it. And in the UI folder also, there are some glass panels. And there's one that's that size too. So we'll stick that over. So then it's on top. And so it looks like the bar is filling a portion of it. And as you can see from the horizontal or HBox container, our things are nicely spaced out there and we don't have to do anything really in the way of layout. So let's add a script to this HUD. Later we might have other things we'll add up here like score and things like that, but we'll come back and do that later when we've figured out how we want to do that. So we're going to add a script here and just worry about updating the health bar. So we're going to add a function called update health bar and we pass it a value. And that means we're going to take the health bar's value and set it equal to that value we passed in. And that's all we really need to do. And now we want to connect that signal. So whenever the player's health changes, we want to send a signal or connect its signal to the HUD so that it will update the health bar with that value. So we go back over to our main. We're going to put an instance of the U HUD UI in there so that when we run it, we'll see our, our HUD up there. And it's in a canvas layer so that it does not uh, scroll with the camera. Right? It stays independent of the camera. Now what we want to do is take the player's health change signal and we want to connect that to the HUD's update health bar. And that's all we need to do. So now we should see it be at 100%, see when we started. And when I get over here and start taking some hits, we can see it go down by 10% each time. And now the player is dead. Now notice that we, we removed the player from the tree, so that means our camera doesn't have anywhere to go now, and it just snapped back up to the corner because it doesn't have any scrolling location anymore. So that's our health bar working, but it's kind of boring. So let's we're going to spice it up a little bit by adding some uh, color to it. So we're right now using this green bar, but we also have a red and a yellow one. And I've already pre-typed these things, but if you want to, if you want to know a shortcut, you can go over here. And when you're like, say, I want the green bar, if I right-click on it, I can say Copy Path, and then when I go over here into the UI, I can paste it in there. So that's a quick way to type these out. You don't have to type these file paths out. But we're going to load all three bars, the red, green, and the yellow. And then when the health bar changes, we're going to check its value and see which one we want to display. So as your health gets lower, it'll turn yellow and then red. So we're going to set the bar texture equal to bar green by default. So normally you'd use green. But if the value is less than 60, then we're going to change to yellow. So we're going to set bar texture to, to bar yellow. And then if the value is less than 25, then we're going to set the bar texture to bar red. 
and then we just have to set the right value there. So we take the health bar and we set its texture underscore progress equal to bar texture. Now we should see our nice green bar and then when we start taking some damage it will change color. All right, see, we turned yellow there. Oh, now we're red. Okay. So that's nice. But another nice thing we could do is animate that change. So instead of the bar just jumping from 100 to 90, we can make it look like more like it's draining down instead of just jumping from one value to the next. And we'll do that with a tween node. So I've added a tween node here to the health bar. And I made it a child of the health bar because just planning ahead and thinking what other things we might add here. We might have different tweens animating different UI components. So we're going to make it a child here. So when we update the health bar, we want to set that tween to interpolate the value from the current value to the destination value and do it over a certain amount of time. And so the way that looks is um, instead of setting the value directly right here, what we're going to do is set the tween. And so these tween method calls can be pretty long because there's a lot of options that go into them. So you're almost always going to have to spread this over multiple lines. So we want to interpolate a property of the health bar. And then I'm going to go down to the next line here. We want to interpret, we want to interpolate its value. We want to start with its current value, whatever it currently is, and we want to go to the destination value that we passed in. For the amount of time, I'm going to put... Now, you, you could get hit pretty rapidly, so you might not see this tr these transitions happening if we do it over too long a time. So I'm going to do it over a short amount of time. And then I'm just going to use the linear transition type and the in out uh, technically doesn't matter when you're doing linear and so now it's now the tween has been configured and we can say we can tell it to start and then that means we don't need this line anymore because now when the tween finishes the value property will be set to the destination value so let's take a look at that and see how that looks when we take a hit now. And this would be even more apparent if we were taking a large amount of damage, but see how it's sliding down now? And that looks a little better, I think. While we're at it, let's add one more effect to the HUD. I'm going to add an animation player. And what we're going to use this for is to make the bar flash white and red just very briefly when you take a hit. So that there's some visual feedback that you've been hit. And so we're going to make a new animation here called Health Bar Flash. And so the configuration of this, if you haven't used the animation player before, um, I recommend, I'll put some uh, links in the description below to where you can go and look at some more beginner examples for it. So I'm not going to go into all the details. But I'm going to set the length of this animation to 0 0.2 again. That's a nice short amount of time. And I'm going to set the steps to 0 0.05. And what we're going to have this do is animate the texture. So I'm going to go to the texture rect and we're going to set the texture progress. Oops, not that one, the texture progress. We're going to set it to red and then white, red and then white, just really quickly to make a flashing effect. So I'm going to add those keyframes and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've just made keyframes here with the texture progress set to red and then white and then red and then white and then red. And so when I hit play, you see we get a nice, very brief, but visual flash. And so we're going to play that animation when we take a hit. So we'll go down here and we start the tween, and then we're also going to play the animation. So we'll say animation player dot play health bar flash, 
Now, the only issue with this is when we finish with the health bar flash, our bar texture is going to be red because that's what it was left at at the end. So one thing we can do to resolve that is when the animation player finishes, we're going to get an animation finished signal. So we can connect that. And this will tell us that an animation finished. And which one finished is in the anim, anim name. So if anim name equals health bar flash, then we're going to set the texture progress back to what it's supposed to be. So now if we go over here and hit run, let's see how it looks now when we take a hit. Now we get a nice visual effect whenever we get hit with that flashing. All right, that'll do it for this time. We, in the next video, will do something similar for the enemy tanks by giving them a health bar as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.